hello everyone you're welcome back to my channel i'm so excited about today's video let's learn how to host a static website in aws s3 with terraform yes we're gonna codify our infrastructure right so if you're a beginner intermediate level and you want to really learn terraform as well as how to codify your infrastructure this is the best video for you ensure you watch this to the end if you are yet to subscribe to my channel kindly subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon that way you get notified every time i publish a new video also drop a thumbs up for me that way you encourage me to keep publishing more quality videos for you guys all right share this video with your friends comment and drop any question if you have one now we can get started so this is my VS code and I've actually cloned my repository at this point when I'm still recording. Uh, this is empty. All right. I'm going to be dropping the link to the, uh, you know, to this report, to the codes that we'll be making use of today. All right. So, um, so now let's begin to create our files. Uh, so for you to follow along, ensure you install Terraform, ensure you have AWS CLI installed, so that you've configured your AWS credentials for just for authentication with the API, right? And ensure that you have a gate, uh, so that you can actually push your changes to your repository and for you to have access to this i encourage you to fork this repository right just fork it and have a copy of the code and then you can go ahead to clone it all right now let's create our first file here and that will be providers.tf so this will be our providers or uh, configuration this terraform block and you know or aws provider in the previous video i showed how you can get that okay so i don't want to keep repeating myself but this is actually uh the basics to start with all right so um we'll be using this version and because we are using aws our provider is aws the region i don't want to add this region i don't want to hard code it uh we'll make it a variable this profile here is basically my username in aws i am all right so um in case you don't know how to configure this please take a look at the previous video where i show how you can actually uh get this done okay uh, please don't use my name <laughs> use your name which you have as your username in aws i am okay so that your authentication can be carried out correctly so for this region we'll be using us east one but i don't want to hard code it like i said so i'm gonna create another file and i'm gonna name these variables dot tf so for this variable i'm gonna type variable and then inside double quotes gonna type my variable name which is my bucket um use underscore my bucket region okay and i'm gonna open the um color braces and then i'll type description equals to my default bucket region okay and then the type is string right and the default um region should be us east one great now to reference this variable in the providers.tf i'll just copy the variable name right come over here and then type var dot what i copy so this is how to reference your variable all right and then coming over to this place let's let's create a new file called main.tf which is where our main configuration file will be okay now the first resource we'll be creating is aws s3 buckets okay and to create that I have a template for it already and in previous Terraform sessions I've shown you how you can get your 
configuration files okay and um, in case you've not seen those videos um you may want to take a look at them i'm going to be dropping some telephone videos so far in the description below identifier sorry so here this is the resource type and this is the resource name or the resource identifier the only parameter we have to configure here is the bucket name and i want to have a variable for that so let's go back to variables.tf file uh, I will copy this, paste it here, and then I can modify it. So here, I would like to have my bucket name. And then the description should be my bucket name. And the type is string. The default value should be. So this way I can... Um, find a unique value for my bucket name so let me name this demo terraform bucket 1001 okay remember your bucket name should be unique all right so now let's reference our variable i'll just copy the variable name go back to main.tf and get rid of this uh, double code type var dot what I copied and this way we'll reference the bucket name okay so this is all we have to do for the buckets I don't want to add much parameters here this is the basics that we can have now for the second resource let's add um, AWS S3 bucket ownership controls Great. And what is this resource all about? So this resource declares or uh, it helps us to configure ownership control for our S3 bucket. All right. So the first parameter here requires that we add the bucket ID. And how do we get the bucket ID? It is by coming over here and copying the our S3 bucket resource type and resource name. Okay. Coming here to add it um let me get rid of what we have here so i'll add this and at the end i'm gonna type dot id and then i'll come to the middle and get rid of the double quote and add dot to join them this is how to get or uh, reference your bucket okay and this is the id attribute so this rule block is uh, just to help us to specify the object ownership okay and it's been referenced as bucket owner preferred okay if you go and type uh if you go to the terraform registry and type this you'll be able to get this resource template okay so the only thing i change here is to add or reference my bucket id all right and then let's move to the third resource so this detailed resource will be creating and it is AWS S3 bucket public access block. Okay. This will help us to this will help us to declare or set up public access blocking settings for our S3 bucket. Okay. Here we need to add our buckets ID. And remember we have ID here already. So I'll just copy it and add it here. Great block public acls okay uh is false we want this to be public so that we can assess it it can be accessible for everyone so it depends on your requirements if you want this to be publicly accessible you leave this as false for this block uh public policy it is false okay because it is public access that we're talking about here ignore public acls is false restrict public bucket is false as well so these are all uh boolean parameters controlling different type of uh, public access okay so the fourth resource that we'll be adding here is s3 bucket acl uh resource block okay so this is what the template looks like and this is the resource type the resource name i can change this to whatever i want okay uh, but i'm gonna just leave this as an example uh if you're configuring this for your organization please use a good naming convention 
in this case it doesn't really matter to me because i'm gonna be destroying this at the end of this tutorial okay um so you you may want to use something better here all right so this bucket acl actually depends on two uh, resources the first resource is the bucket ownership control which we've configured over here and the, another dependency is on the public uh, access block okay we have actually bucket bucket public access block here so these are the two dependencies that we need to add here because we can't configure ACL without this depending on these two resources so how do we reference them here so I'll just come and copy the resource type and the resource name of this one the ownership control for our bucket right come down here and paste it take note of the indentation okay and um, so i'll just delete the double quotes here and add dot to join the resource type and the resource name all right and then i want to add comma moving to the second line let's also add another um depends on parameter so that it depends on this one as well so i'll copy this come back to the second line and paste it then remove this and add dot to join them and then with another comma right and coming down um i have a wrong reference here so we need to reference our bucket over here and how do we reference our bucket it is by going up and copying the bucket type and the bucket name in the bucket resource block and pasting it here and coming to the middle to remove the double quote type dot to join them and at the end type dot uh, type dot id great the SEL is public read because we want it to be publicly accessible awesome so for the fifth resource we'll be creating our bucket policy so i will add the template here and i'm gonna explain so this is the aws s3 bucket policy and this is the resource name you can change this name to whatever you want and for this bucket parameter here we'll be adding uh the bucket id and to get the bucket id it is actually the id we've been using it is here so i'll copy this one and then gonna paste it here and we are good and for this policy json uh document is just to allow public read access okay and um like i said i have a video for you know hosting a static website in aws and in that video i showed how to generate this uh this policy okay uh like i said i'll be dropping the link in the description below if you want to see how that is being done manually so the policy parameter is set to a json encoded policy document okay allowing public read access to objects in our bucket for this version we are using uh we're using version 2012.10-17 uh, and for the statement we have here we have effect uh we, we we've set our effect to allow okay so this will basically allow um access for this principle uh we are for principle here we are specifying the entity that the policy applies to okay and this is to is applying to anyone for the action here this specify the action that is allowed so the we want to allow get object in our s3 bucket okay and for the resource here it specifies the amazon resource name arn of our bucket and how do we add that so inside this curly braces we need to add or reference our bucket okay and how do we reference our bucket let's go over to our variable and get our variable name which is my bucket name okay go back 
to reference it, I'm gonna type var dot this, and that's how I've referenced my bucket name. So this applies to my bucket. This policy applies to my bucket, and it can allow us to get all right or have read access to our object in this bucket. Now the next action I want to take here is to create a folder. So we'll be having, we'll be uh, hosting uh, a static website and it is actually HTML uh, file that we need to have. So we'll be having two pages, index.html file and an error page. Okay. So if you have a website I want to host, uh, you need to create a folder for it. So in this, this is our main working directory. Okay. All you need to do is to click on create this folder icon and type your folder name. I want to give this web.files as the name of my folder. And then inside this folder, I want to create a file and I want to name this um, index.html. Sorry. Great. And then I also click on creating another file and I'm going to call this error. So this will be the error page. All right. Okay. So having added these files, let's go into the main.tl file again. So the next resource we want to add here is a template file. Okay. It is also a module. I will explain. So this is, this module is called template file. And this module declaration basically imports the HashiCorp template module, all right, which is used for managing template files. So uh, template files is the name of this module instance, okay? And the source parameter here specifies the it specifies the, 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 the source location of the module. And in this case, it's from HashiCorp registry, okay? And here we have base directory. The base directory will actually reference the directory that we have here, which is where our website files will be stored. Okay. So this just to reference that so that it can uh, make use of the files that will store over there. Okay. And then remember, we'll still add content though. So we'll come back here to add content to these files. So to reference that, all we need to do, uh, the only place I need to make change is in this. So I will need to add the web file name or the directory basically where our file will be stored. So I will just uh, get rid of this and the name is web files. So this is the name of our folder. Okay. And um, before we go ahead, let's add the content right now. So I'll be adding my HTML file here, my code, right? So feel free to customize this. The content we have here is web uh, sorry, website hosting in AWS. Uh, learn how to host your website in AWS with ease. I can customize this to say, I just learned how to host a static website in AWS with Terraform. Okay, this looks good. And for the error page, okay, this will be the content of my error page. This is just to display the page you are looking for could not be found. Okay, and uh, yeah, this will be the default error page. All right. So let's go back to main.tf file. So before we continue, it is important. I show you how I got this module template. How did I get it? I'll be pasting this and I'll, I'll just comment it out. Okay. So this is actually the URL where you get to see the template we used here. Okay, so this is where I got the template from Terraform template directory module. Okay, uh, as you can see, this is how I got mine. 
template files if you want you can read more about this okay and down here we also have a template that can help us to upload files to our s3 bucket all right but before that let's first configure the website hosting settings for our s3 buckets so i'm gonna paste the template and here the resource type is S3 bucket website configuration. And this is the name I gave to this as my resource name web config. So the first parameter we have here is to, um, you know, reference our bucket to give the bucket ID. All right. So the bucket ID is the one we've been using so far. So I will copy this from here, scroll down and paste. All right. So over here we have configuration for our index document. I just need to um, give the name of my default page, okay, which is index.html. So I'll just type index.html and yeah, that is it. So this is basically how to uh, configure the website hosting settings for our S3 bucket. So the next resource we'll be adding here is, um, you know, S3 object resource for hosting bucket files. Okay. So this is a resource where we get to upload our files or uh, as object into our S3 bucket. So from the documentation, I just showed you, I, I copied this. Okay. And all we have to do here is to add our bucket name. Okay. I'm going to explain what these parameters stand for though, but let's add our bucket ID. Okay. How do we reference that? Just like we've done so far, I'll copy the bucket, um, ID, right. And reference it here and we are good. And to close the, uh, the curly braces from here. All right. So this is the resource type. This is the resource name, right? I just added the bucket ID to reference our bucket. So for each parameter here, this will basically, um, it will help to iterate over each of the file that we've defined in our, in our, you know, template module all right it will just help to iterate over each of our files remember our files are here already and the template module we've added they have explained what it means so for each we we'll just iterate over those files for the key here this key is to specify the name of the object in our s3 bucket for the content type here, it will specify the MIME type of our object content. If you're doing this manually from the console, you get to see all this. Uh, from uh, the source that we have here means the local file path or the URL of our object uh, content. Okay. And for the content here, this will specify the content of our object. And this is the way uh you know transform access to configure it all right and then uh for the e tag of the object this is basically uh this will just specify the e tag that is entity tag of the s3 object okay so with this it will help to upload our object to s3 bucket and what is it uploading the files that we have here right i would like us to have an output block as well so let's create a uh, output.tf file so output.tf and basically what i want to have here is to i basically want to display the website url after deployment okay i don't want to go to AWS or S3 bucket and start looking for URL. I want it to be displayed once the deployment is successful. Okay. So to configure this output block, I'll type output and then I'll name this website URL. And then I'm going to open this call it braces and I'll type my description. 
equals to my website URL okay and then I'll have the value as so we need to locate where we've you know created our um our S3 bucket website configuration block all right let's go to the main.tf file and look for the block for website configuration this is it here so I'll just copy the resource type and the resource name go back and paste it so come to the middle and remove this double quote and type dot to join them and at the end type dot and website underscore endpoint okay that is the attribute and it will give us the url of our website after deployment so this is actually looking good and we can proceed with uh, initializing our working directory so from the left hand side i'll just open an integrated terminal and i'll use bash terminal i'm using git bash though so it doesn't matter the terminal you're using let's initialize by the way i have this in auto save okay so you can choose to auto save or manually save it so the first command is terraform in need and let's give this a moment to initialize the backend the working directory initialize the module and install the necessary plugin so as you can see terraform has been successfully initialized okay and you can see the terraform um subdirectory has been created with some binaries for our you know providers you can see uh uh this has been created as well great so let's go ahead to run this command terraform plan so that we can see the execution plan of the resources that will be deployed okay great plan to add yeah it to add so um, that means we are creating eight resources and if you scroll up you can actually see all the resources that uh we desire that is our desired um resources or configuration right so um everything looks okay to me all right so i'll clear my screen so the next command is terraform apply which is the command that will deploy these resources and that way we'll have our website our static website hosted in amazon s3 bucket all right so let me run terraform apply and it will ask me to confirm that i want to um deploy these resources i will type yes and we'll just give this few minutes um maybe like average of two minutes to oh great it's actually so fast okay you can see apply complete eight resources added and because we have output.tf uh configuration or block you can see the url of our website is being displayed here so all we need to do is to uh confirm the deployment of this and then assess our website with this but before i go to the management console i can actually use a uh, call and then type http and then copy this url and paste it here and let's see if this website is reachable great we can actually reach this let's go to aws management console and if i click on bucket this is our bu bucket here and is in this region you can see it is public this is today's date okay the date i'm creating this video so if i click on this bucket let's see the object inside the bucket we have error and index.html files here or oh, 
this is awesome and, and and you can see publicly accessible all right so this has been hosted successfully and if you want to actually make this more robust in the video where i i i taught how to publish a static website in aws manali uh we use we use uh cloudfront we used you know row 53 and it was actually more robust than this okay uh that one will also use certificate manager so the website was more secured so if you want you can go ahead to add all this configuration in your child phone file right depending on your requirement okay so now let's copy the url and access this from the browser so just copy from here right browser and let's see if this is access great website hosting in aws i just learned how to host a static website in aws with terraform thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video before you go if you are just practicing ensure you use terraform destroy to destroy this just like i'm doing terraform destroy okay dash dash auto approve so that it can automatically approve that this is because i don't want aws to build me too much all right okay thank you so much please drop me a thumbs up if you are yet to do so this is just to encourage me and help youtube to route this video to more viewers all right comment and maybe you can comment to say thank you or to ask me a question if you have i'm gonna be dropping the link to this uh code that we use okay and thank you so much for watching i'm gonna see you in my next video bye